Greg sits in the corner. Poe sits behind. They've come to meet and unwind. Poe asks about Norway. Greg about Baltimore. They are both keen to know more. There's a play by Steve Martin, that Steve Martin, the Steve Martin, called Picasso at the La Panagile, and it's it's a basically a fictional a fictional account of a meeting between Picasso and Albert Einstein. Whether such a meeting took place, I don't know. I've never read the play. I've never seen it. All I know is the concept of it. And that's the bit of it that appealed to me, was this meeting between two historical figures. The meeting between Picasso and Einstein is a bit more plausible because they around the same age and were in the in Paris at the same time so it kind of works Grieg Edvard Grieg and Edgar Allan Poe were barely alive at the same time <laughs> I think Grieg was seven when Edgar Allan Poe died so it's not it's not hugely plausible but I really like those two, I'm a big fan of those two, so it, 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 the idea of them meeting and maybe collaborating on something was kind of interesting to me. I think this song has some of my favorite music stuff in it on the whole album. Once again, very dynamic, and I kept, I kept rattling on to Liam that this was, just reminded me of the Alan Parsons project, and had he been listening to it, and no, he didn't even know they were, so, so there went that theory, but it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit Parson-esque, I think. Some really great playing from, from everybody. My dad came in and played guitar on the chorus, acoustic guitar on the choruses, and that was awesome to have him on it. Jonty's drumming on this, I think, is some of his best work. The cool thing about this one is I feel like it was quite, like, I got to layer a lot, although I didn't obviously play over myself. I kind of got to start, I kind of started and built, kind of like make it to the end, but with, after the solo and like, like you said, after the solo, it kind of comes in and like, and I kind of got to play, not necessarily like a beat, but I got to play with the music and play with the singing and like kind of with the vocal line. I was like, just da 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 And I and it kind of I got to be more free with it, I think, and I kind of felt it just felt right, I guess, doing that song. And there's a bit towards the end of the last chorus, I guess you'd call it, after the the guitar solo, the electric guitar solo, um, that it's kind of driving and steady, but then he goes into the syncopation bit towards the end that's just fantastic. I think it's my favorite drumming that he's ever done. Bray played electric guitar on it and did this amazing guitar solo. That was one of the songs that we did in the session where Liam came up um, to visit. Um, and uh, I believe it was just kind of some guitar stuff. So there are a couple of like big guitar chords and then, um, and then a little bit of a guitar solo, um, which always freaked me out a little bit because I don't, I'm not like the best of guitarists, you know? Um, but it was really, 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 um, it was really, really lovely. We just kind of sat down and took our time um, and kind of journeyed through and found the spaces and the things that we that we wanted to do. As loath as I am to, to play guitar solos, they're always satisfying 
um, when they're done and you can listen back to it and you can go, no, oh, yeah, no, that was all right. So these, these parts turn up and when you get files and you think, oh, I've got to try and fly this in and make it match everything, um, the sound, the, the tone that he was getting on the guitar just sat so nicely with the song. He obviously had a, um, a good thing about it, dialed in the tone and it just sits in there. It's very cool. There was something missing from the choruses and I felt like it needed it needed a little more funk. It wasn't quite funky enough. Um, and I'm not really capable of playing that kind of thing. So I said to Tim, could you add like a little funky keyboard bit in the choruses? Every now and then I'd get called on to do a little bit here and there. So I did some some keyboard on this, which was kind of fun. We're listening to it and thinking, oh, I just need something else to help drive in the chorus. Distortion always sells. So we got a nice, well, it's a piano sound and distorted it. The drums and bass with it, you get, an, you get a better idea of how it grooves with the track. notice um, is there but it's kind of hidden under things but it's it's there and I think it adds a whole lot to the song and then it just you just begin the layering process so there's some very cool bass that Liam played in there with um, what was the reference there was a reference in there of something that we used that um, was quite delightful uh, see if you can find it somewhere in there in the bass line there's a reference to a song <laughs> and just the way the story unfolds, I think it's quite, it's quite gratifying. <laughs> 